Welcome to the Tool Review Channel. Today we're taking a look at the Fujia 3000Z-225 Linesman pliers. Now as you can see here, these are I believe a 9 inch pair of Linesman pliers from Fujia. Now if you aren't familiar with the Fujia brand, they are a tool brand that comes out of Japan. And like most tools that come out of Japan, they are high quality and they have a pretty good finish on almost every tool that uh, they produce. Um, and every tool that I've gotten is looks clean uh, and pretty much all look the same. So we're going to take a look at these uh, pliers first. So we're going to start first start off with the handles. Now these handles are a little bit different than the previous Fujia pliers that I have reviewed on the channel. Now this is more of a harder plastic, uh, but it's still soft in the hands. Uh, the handle material kind of reminds me of the marble cross cut pliers that I did, where it was that kind of a harder plastic, but it, you know, it still felt comfortable in the hands. And then coming to the back of those handles, you can see right there, you have two holes right there. Now that is for if you were working at a height and or you needed to have a tether on your tool um, prevent, to prevent it from falling down below and possibly striking and or injuring someone. Now I do believe uh, Fujia sells a uh, little tether that can go into there. It's a little clip that kind of clips onto there. Um, the tool can be tethered off so you don't have to worry about dropping it. Coming up to the business end of the tool, you can see you have the Fujian name laser etched onto the surface and you have their little logo as well. You have your model number on the front of the tool and then you have made in Japan. And then I believe the KX1 is going to be the manufacturer code for when the tool was produced, but I could totally be wrong. Could mean something else. And you also have a crimper right here on the back of the uh, tool. And you also have some teeth right back there as well. So if you were gripping onto say a fish tape, you're trying to pull a fish tape or you're trying to pull something, uh, with those, you could theoretically grip it with those jaws, clamp down on it, and you should be able to pull it with two hands. Now coming to the front of the pliers, as you can see right here, you have a super long cutting edge right there. And I have been messing around with uh, this one, uh, kind of testing it out before I made the video on using the pliers. Um, so th that is a fairly nice cutting edge right there. And then we'll come to the nose of the pliers. And as you can see, both top and bottom, the teeth are going in the same direction. Now that I think is the one downside to these pliers. Um, it would have been nice if they would have put a cross hatch design on them just so when you're twisting or um, you, you just getting grip on something trying to pull a nail or a screw or whatever you're trying to do or a staple um, that extra the cross hatching grip I feel digs into the material more and you don't lose grip as easy as you do if um, when all the teeth are in the same direction. Um, but that's pretty much it for the detail. Now, the the back has this black coating on it. I'm not sure if it's protected from uh, rust or whatever, um, but almost all of the uh, Fuji pliers that I've taken a look at so far uh, have this on the back of the pliers. It does look nice, I do say. Uh, a little piece of mine did chip off right there, but, you know, that's no problem. That's going to happen with the use of the pliers. Uh, but you can get a backside look at the crimper and, and the uh, the. the fairly large rivet. Now one thing to note about this, uh, that the rivet, uh, even though the back side of it's fairly large, uh, it's not really close to the cutting edge. Uh, I know on the back it kind of looks like it's close, but it's not close to the cutting edge. Um, so I, you can't really say it's a high leverage design. Obviously you're going to have some leverage with the handles on here, um, but if the, the rivet being so far back, you are going to struggle a little bit and you're most likely going to hear a little bit more snapping sound when you're cutting through some thicker, um, some thicker material. Uh, that's one thing to note about these pliers, but enough, that's pretty much it for the detail on here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and zoom out here and we'll get to cutting up some wire here. Uh, so the first wire we always like to start with is our 18 gauge wire. So we're going to first start off with some 18 gauge solid wire and see if we can cut through that. And it can cut through that no problem. It's a, actually a pretty smooth cut cutting through there. Uh, you, can, you, you can hear a little bit of a snapping sound, but you don't really feel it in the hands. Uh, which is nice. So now we have some 18 gauge stranded wire and we are able to cut through that. Uh, and again, you do hear that snapping sound, but you, you barely feel anything in your hands. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side and we'll bring in some 14 gauge stranded wire right here. And we'll go ahead and cut through that. And it does like to eject it, which I do like when uh, the pliers do do that as they eject the wire after you cut it. And it gets through that 14 gauge stranded wire without a problem. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. And we will bring in some 14 gauge solid wire. 
which if we were to get to the 14 gauge stranded, I would hope we can get to the solid. And as you can see right there, you cut through it, no problem whatsoever. And it is a pretty smooth cut, I do have to say. So I'll put that off to the side and bring in our next wire, which is going to be some 12 gauge stranded wire. And as you can see, we are able to cut through that, no problem. And then one thing I like to do with larger wire, um, just depending on you know what I'm doing, uh, out in the field. Uh, sometimes I do like to use my linesman pliers to strip wire. So we're going to see if we can strip this 12 gauge uh, stranded wire uh, right here. So we'll go ahead and pierce that outer insulation and we'll go ahead and see if we can't pull that off. Uh, so we'll work it a little bit right there. Maybe I didn't cut it around all the way. So we'll go like that and we'll go ahead and pull that off and you are able to strip the wire uh, if you do it correctly and it obviously cuts the wire fairly decent as well. So I'll go ahead and set that off to the side and we'll bring in some 12 gauge solid wire, which again, if it cuts the strand wire, it should be able to cut through the solid and it cuts through that solid like butter. So I'll go ahead and put that off to the side and we'll bring in our 10 gauge stranded wire right here. And so again, I always, well, first we'll go ahead and cut through that and it cuts through that, no problem. Uh, and I always like to, specifically with 10 gauge, I like to use a pair of line lens pliers to strip it. Um, so we'll go ahead and cut that outer insulation with those teeth and we'll pull off that insulation. Uh, as you can see, we are able to do it. Sorry about the camera shaking right there, um, but we are able to pull off that outer insulation right there and we're able to cut through it as well. So we'll set that off to the side and we'll bring in some solid 10, number 10 solid wire and we should easily be able to cut through that. Now you do have to use a little bit more force uh, when you get up to the thicker gauges of wire, um, but these, these pliers can cut through it no problem whatsoever. So now we're gonna get in some thermostat wire right here. And this is 18.5 thermostat wire with some insulation that runs down the center of it. Now, some pliers do struggle to get through that piece of insulation. Others can cut through it no problem. So we're gonna see if these uh, can cut through that insulation without a problem. And as you can see, cuts through that uh, all five of those 18 gauge wires and the insulation uh, has no problems getting through that. So I'll set that off to the side and we will bring in some Romex wire to test here. So we've got some 14.2 with ground Romex wire right here. Now it's probably, you're probably gonna struggle a little bit with the Romex wire since that rivet is so far back uh, from the cutting knives, uh, but we'll go ahead and test it out right here. And as you can see, you can cut through that 14 uh, two with ground, no problem with one hand. So we'll set that off to our the side and we'll bring in some 12 two with ground. Now I'm expecting to struggle with this one a little bit just because it's a thicker wire. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, right here. But as you can see, you can use one hand, but you definitely have to use a little bit of more, a, lot, a lot more force to get through it. And it is, you can definitely feel that snapping action when you go to cut through the wire uh, right there. But it got through that no problem. So now we're going to bring in some eight gauge stranded wire right here. And we'll go ahead and see if we can or can't cut this. And as you can see right there, you are able to cut through that eight gauge stranded wire. No problem whatsoever. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side and we'll bring in our last wire we're gonna test here, which is some six gauge stranded wire. And we'll go ahead and see if we can't cut through this. Definitely, you definitely have to use some force, but it, as you can see, it cuts through it no problem whatsoever and you for being a six gauge strand wire you don't really feel the snapping that you do with the romex wire which is kind of odd um but as you can see it is able to get through that no problem whatsoever so go ahead and clear that stuff out of the background um so overall these are definitely a pretty nice pair of pliers from fujio now the one thing i think that would make or, there's a couple things i think that would make uh these pliers just phenomenal uh, one, if they move that rivet just a little bit closer to the cutting edge. And two, if they would put some cross hatching on the front of the jaws, I think that would just make a pretty damn good pair of uh, lineman pliers. Um, that would probably obviously compare to the Knipex ones uh, that are out there. That's, that's really my only two complaints uh, about these pliers. I, I, could, I, I could still easily recommend them to someone who's looking for a pair of pliers. Um, and maybe wants a little bit higher quality uh, tool or and or maybe looking to get a some get into the tools from Japan. I could easily recommend these to anybody. 
Um, anybody looking for a new pair, definitely check these out. Now I picked these up off of Amazon. Uh, at the time of filming this video, you can get them off of just the standard Amazon site. Um, but if you can't, uh, you should be able to head over to uh, Amazon Japan, um, go over to that website, and you should be able to import them into the United States. Uh, it's obviously going to take a, lot, a little bit longer than if you were to get them off of standard Amazon, um, but that is an option if you are looking to get these and you can't get them through normal Amazon. That would be my recommendation to pick these up. Uh, but overall, definitely a nice pair of pliers, and I am super happy that I bought them and now have them in my collection. Um, so with that being said, that's all I have for this video. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video to be uploaded.